Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So I am in Northern New Jersey, uh, Woodbridge, I think. <laughs> Getting close to New York, uh, going to visit my son. We just got done with reunions. It was fantastic. My voice is a little rocky from all of that because of screaming at people because everything's always loud, apparently, every place I go. Um, anyway, I wanted to talk about a thread. Someone you know, put me onto it this morning on Twitter. It is a, a person whose name is Value Dissenter who identifies himself as a, um, well, also identifies himself as a parody account. I'm going to put a link to the original thread in the description because it's, it's very long. Uh, but anyway, he says he's a, a, you know, short Tesla. It's a Tesla Q thread. So I want to identify all of this up front. But he does say that he did work in full self-driving in the industry for a period of time, doesn't anymore, but did before. And so, you know, again, I, I'm just identifying the parameters of this. But effectively, what this person said is that Tesla is out of compute power with their hardware three computer, which means that they simply don't have enough computer in the vehicle right here. I'm charging at the you know supercharger, but as you're driving, the car is out of, of power. It's basically running at max capacity. And you know, he went through and it was a very intelligent thread. And I, you know, it was originally, I was going to look at this and I was going to reject it and say like, oh, this guy's just a dumb dummy, you know, Tesla Q person, but it does align with my thinking, which is that Tesla, the hardware three came out in 2018 or maybe it was 2019. Uh, anyway, it was right around that area. So it's been out for at least three years, probably, you know, getting onto four. And then you look at maybe a three year cycle before that two to three years to develop the chip. So we're looking at a half a decade old chip at this point when it was started. And, and you know, that, that makes a big difference in the world of computing is to have something that old. And my fear has always been that they made this thing to the best specs they could in the mid 20 teens but that it's simply out of power at this point it doesn't have enough left now if you look at my um full self-driving 10.12 release notes i don't have that by the way otherwise i'd do a, a a video on that hopefully i'll get it soon but anyway if you look at my release notes videos the very last thing is that they said they actually clocked up they made a bunch of improvements but also got 1.6 or 1.8 frames i think it was 1.8 frames per second faster while doing this, which means that they're able to do all of this compute stuff and actually do it at almost two frames per second faster than previously. That seems to negate the argument that they're out of compute power, but you know, but they also might be just scraping the bottom of the barrel. But anyway, what, what this person, the value to center, what his argument is, or I'm assuming it's a him, but anyway, their argument is that uh, the, the, the chips are basically maxed out and they're able to make small incremental changes, but as they keep adding variables in, and, and his example in particular was vehicles opening their doors because that's a new feature with 10.12, which means basically the car is like this, right? And then the person opens their door and now the vehicle, now the Tesla full self-driving uh, beta will recognize that a car a car's door is open. And I actually saw that just this morning I was driving. I was actually driving myself because I was going someplace short, but it, I noticed in the visualization that it showed that the car door was open as the, you know, as the person got out of the car. So that was very cool. But this person's argument is that every single new one of those things, new features, new parameters that gets introduced is bogging down the system because it's making the neural network model model bigger and bigger and therefore it's impossible for it to keep up so the interesting thing about this and he was saying that they actually have evidence they have a vehicle they have a i think it was a tesla model 3 that they had um, you know somehow jacked into and they were watching it as it was driving and they were seeing it run out of compute power so i have no way of verifying that whatsoever but let's just roll with that at the moment that that is actually true you know that's an actual fact that that's what's going on if that's the case what that means is that the computer has to basically gracefully fail if it maxes out. So essentially what it's doing is it's saying like, I'm running at 80% capacity while everything's good. And, and what value to center was saying was like something funky happens to the lanes. And what, what goes on is that the car is like, has to suddenly 
concentrate more on the lanes and spend more compute power. So it suddenly goes over 100% compute power and it then has to fail safe itself. So what it does is it, it just releases the, the lane line information and only worries about not, this person said non-PR disaster. I mean, that's that's a rude way of putting it because he was like, don't hit pedestrians, don't hit other cars. It's a, that's not a PR thing. That's a safety thing, right? The number one thing that a vehicle cannot do and a human driver cannot do is hit somebody else or another vehicle. That's the most important thing above all. So it's a it's a very rude way of putting it to say it's a PR thing, because it's not. It's a safety thing, obviously. And if anybody knows Tesla, like not just the full self-driving, but the vehicles themselves, these cars are built to be the safest cars in the world, and that's what they are. So so you know that's that's a it makes me it's unfortunate because I feel like this thread is actually a valuable thread and there's actually some valuable information contained in it, but it's said in a way that makes you want to not listen to it. So I'm trying to listen to it. But anyways, okay, so we've got the full self-driving hardware that's, you know, half a decade plus old. We've got its ability to drive, it's maxing itself out. Remember, they have two redundant chips, but I think that they're actually running on both of those chips all together right now. So they're no longer using them in redundant fashion. They're maxing it out. So they've basically taken over the entire board and they're doing the best that they can in terms of maxing this stuff out. The question then becomes that they can make these incremental advances, but the question becomes where do you absolutely reach the limits of compute power? And if we're pretty much at that level at this point, that means that we need a new hardware rev in order to make the, the cars able to full self-drive. And and what uh, uh, value descenders, it, it was an interesting idea because I just assumed like, hey, let's look at hardware four, right? Roll it out, give it to everybody or sell it for a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars or something like that and have everybody replace their compute boards with hardware four and then we'll all have full self-driving and the world will be magical and unicorns will rain down from the sky and everything will be great. So, uh, but what, what he was saying was that it's possible that hardware four might not be powerful enough because remember, they've already taped out hardware four. They've already produced pre-production runs. They've already got something that's out there that they're able to, uh, you know, create, they've, they've got it in cars. I believe that the Cybertruck, the prototype Cybertrucks have hardware for in them. And, uh, you know, I would assume that Tesla bot will have hardware for in it as well. And, but I do know also from, from speaking to people that of course they're working on hardware five and I don't know, you know, this person did not identify how many revs they are out, but I think they're in early development of hardware six even also at this point. So, you know, they've obviously got a future plan and remember the chip shortage really kind of derailed things because I think if it weren't for the chip shortage and the pandemic and all of that stuff, hardware four would be in cars that would have been produced recently instead of hardware three. But anyway, the value descenders point was maybe hardware four won't be enough for this either and you'll reach another local maximum and then you'll need hardware five. So the Tesla's in a bad spot because what they don't wanna do is roll out hardware four, go through the very large expense and have everybody install it and all that and then go like, oops, sorry, we need actually hardware five. So he's, his point was basically that full self-driving is never going to get solved by Tesla and it comes down to the fact that they don't know how much the hardware needs to advance. Now, I would contend, you know, this, we're going with me. Again, I don't have access to their hardware. I can't look at the hardware while it's driving and see exactly what's going on and how close they are to maximum compute. But assuming that they are really, really close and they can't quite get it with hardware three, there is, hardware four is a, a lot better. <laughs> you know, it's a much smaller nanometer processing chip. They have a lot more transistors on it. It runs cooler. It runs faster. We're so close to full self-driving at this point that I don't think, I don't really buy the argument that they might need hardware five in order to make full self-driving happen. And remember, it's always, there is no such thing as full self-driving automatic, it works and it's great, and we no longer need to improve. It's always gonna be chasing the nines no matter what. So it's always going to be improving, but to get to the point where the car can drive itself without needing human intervention, if we can't do it with hardware three, guaranteed we can do it with hardware four. There's simply no way that we need 
that much more compute power than we already have. It's very, very close to being able to work. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this. I, I really did, you know, I was, I was ready to reject this and say like, nah, this is not a real thing. But I read it and I was like, no, he's actually got some good points. Just unfortunately said in a very sort of Tesla Q sort of way, like proving that there's no way that full self-driving is going to work. I don't buy that at all. But anyway, I would be interested to know what you all think. If anybody does have access to the hardware in terms of like being able to actually jack into it directly and read out uh, information about what's going on in the computer, I would be I would be really interested to know. So definitely like <clears throat> direct message me on Twitter or something, <clears throat> or you know comment down here. But anyway, I'd be really interested to know what all that is. In the meantime, I'm going to go and see my son in Brooklyn and it will be really interesting. We're charging up. I'm, I'm going to be fascinated to see how full self-driving 10.11.2 handles driving in the city of New York. That will be <laughs> a little bit scary. It's actually done better than we have here. I took it off full self-driving for a second when we were on the turnpike because I thought I knew better than the car and actually ended up going like five miles out of our way and having to pay extra tolls. So I should have let full self-driving do it. It knew what it was doing better than I did. Anyway, everybody have a lovely Sunday and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.